the Honda Accord is all new for its 11th generation. Honda's been keeping us pretty busy lately. Let's get into this enduring favorite. The very first Honda Accord was a two-door hatchback, but not so much anymore. Others in the Accord's current category, or what's left of it, include the Toyota Camry, Kia K5, Hyundai Sonata, Nissan Altima, and even the Chevy Malibu, though that's not going to be around much longer either. The Accord is available both as a gas and hybrid mid-size sedan. So the gas engine comes on both the LX and the EX. Those are the two lowest trim levels. It does come powered with a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine that gets 192 horsepower and makes 192 pound-feet of torque. The Sport, EXL, Sport L, and Touring have a two-motor hybrid setup paired to a two-liter Atkinson engine. That hybrid is more powerful than the outgoing model. And kudos to it because the Accord gets decent zip in the acceleration department. It definitely feels more responsive than the previous version. But the unfortunate news here is that Honda's walked away from the 2.0-liter turbo, which at 252 horsepower was a great option for those seeking something sportier. This hybrid doesn't come close enough for me. All Accords come standard with one-pedal driving. I am in max one-pedal right now, and it's a pretty smooth system. Does it go all the way to a full stop? You know, not necessarily. Um, but when I have it on max regen, I mean, it's pretty smooth. You can lighten it up. It has a lot of different settings, probably like five settings, so you can adjust it however you want it, which I totally love. Um, and when it's off, you just don't even really feel like it's regen. I will say this, the hybrid brakes are a little bit squishy, um, so you do have to kind of put your foot into them a little bit, but I mean, overall, it's one of those systems that you can kind of customize quite a bit on your own. It's good. There are four drive modes, one of those is new. It's an individual mode that you can customize yourself when it comes to throttle response, steering feel, and other driving parameters. You can definitely tell a difference between eco, normal, and sport. More so between eco and normal. You put it into eco and you definitely feel like the throttle mapping has sort of ratcheted back a little bit. You have to put your foot more into the throttle to accelerate. But then you put it into normal and sport and it's definitely more free flowing with the power. The one thing I will say too about sport mode is it really firms up the steering, which as you all know, I like a more heavily weighted steering wheel and I like how it really feels. So personally, if it were me driving this, I would have it in sport mode all the time. The cabin feels blissfully quiet almost to premium car standards, and the visibility looks good, though thanks to that raked roof and high rear window, rear visibility can be a challenge. The Accord, to me, has always been one of the top of the mid-priced, mid-sized vehicles that you can buy. As far as the ride quality goes, I mean, this, this thing is ridiculously comfortable. Even when you are in sport mode, the suspension is really nicely tuned. It rides on the same global chassis that the previous Accord rode on, but it's a little bit stiffer and they've just made some adjustments in that regard. I love the way that this car handles. It's really easy to drive, very compliant. It's super comfortable. It's really hard to find anything to complain about. And I think when you're looking for a vehicle that you are trying to commute in, that is the secret sauce. That's the best thing that you could hope for. Um, the Accord is still top notch. It turns so easily and effortlessly. Honestly, I'm having a lot more fun than anyone would think you would have in an Accord. <laughs> the hybrid comes equipped with a CVT, and as much as I have complained about them in the past, I am going to say that they are definitely making huge strides when it comes to improvements. This one in particular, you know, even when I'm about to come around this turn and I have to let off the throttle a little bit and then I want to come out of the turn and pick up a little bit. You know, honestly, I don't really feel a whole lot of lag. Certainly there's no searching for gears, which is really nice. And it, 
it doesn't disrupt my driving experience really at all. There's a little bit of kind of a loud droning noise when you really put your foot back into the throttle. But other than that, I really don't have a whole lot to complain about here. With the combination hybrid powertrain, I think Honda's found a really nice way to balance out this car. Uh, around these turns, it's feeling really well balanced. I'm you know, feel a little bit of body roll, but it's not super tremendous. Feels pretty stable, very confidence inspiring. I think as a daily commuter, it, the Honda Accord, guys, there's a reason why it's been around for decades. This one is hard to beat. The seats are also reworked and feel both supportive and comfortable. I could hit up a road trip in this one for sure. But one caution, they might feel a bit on the narrower side to someone bigger than I am. Looking at fuel economy numbers, they come in where I'd expect them to. That 51 mile number on the EXL trim hybrid looks impressive. Gas mileage is another reason to really love a sedan, guys. Of course, the exterior is completely redone too. I happen to think this is the best looking Accord yet. But what about you? What do you think? It's got that longer hood look and thinner A-pillars like the Civic got. A strong, defined character line just at the belt and an upright grille, which I think looks proportionally excellent. It's elegant and grown up. It's also 2.7 inches longer and has a wider rear track. I'm not sure I'm super crazy about cars getting bigger and bigger. This certainly isn't that two-door hatchback, but we know what bigger on the outside ultimately means. More room on the interior for passengers. You know what, if I'm sitting back here, I don't mind it. Since we're in here, the interior does a great job, same as the Civic does. It's simple, yes, but it's got this metal pattern over the air vents that gives it visual interest. It's not boring, but lays down some sporty vibes. There's style, and who doesn't want a little bit of style? Drivers get a 10.2 inch interface for the digital gauge cluster. On the two gas-powered models, you'll get a 7-inch touchscreen standard with wired connectivity and charging. The hybrids get a 12.3-inch touchscreen standard that features wireless phone connectivity for both Apple and Android users. And there's this handy ledge right here to steady your hand and make inputs while you're driving. The Touring trim gets Google built in, which helps you make commands and gives you seamless navigation, as well as a 12-speaker Bose audio system and wireless charging. The Accord gets a new HMI system that has a faster processor, and you know what? It looks pretty quick to me. Um, it also is a little bit less layered, which I really like. You get a lot of relevant and important buttons right here, uh, but not too many to make it sort of cluttered and complicated. The other thing that you will get here are over-the-air updates, which is always great for updating software but it doesn't get you Kelly Blue Book videos. You have to subscribe to the KBB YouTube channel for that. Honda's suite of safety features, Honda Sensing, gets more goodies that come standard across the board, including forward collision warning, a road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. This system has been greatly improved. It's smooth, doesn't jerk the car around, and barely makes itself known. It also gets a wider field of view from 50 degrees to 90 degrees, and maybe that's why it's so better. It's just seeing so much more of the road. You'll also get traffic sign recognition and on the EXL and above, blind spot warnings with cross traffic monitoring. Pricing on the Accord starts around $27,300 for the LX, not including destination. With safety features, smart entry, and remote start, that gauge cluster, and almost 200 horsepower, that is a lot of car for a good price. If you jump into the base sport hybrid model, you're looking at closer to $32,000. That gets you 19-inch wheels, a leather steering wheel and shift knob, and some sporty exterior bits. The rest of the trim walk, of course, goes up from there. But for that touring with its head-up display, ventilated front seats, rear heated seats and rain sensing wipers, that is also a lot of car for your money. Find yourself suddenly thinking about a trade-in? I kind of don't blame you. Want to know what your car is worth? Click on the link above and KBB can help you figure it out.
The Honda Accord is already in dealers, so you can go check out the snazzy new styling, the super cool tech, the improved driving dynamics, and the improved interior space for yourself.